Good Friday morning, NTV Chief Meteorologist Eddie Shear with you. Just wanted to do an NL weather briefing for you before I head into work for the day, going over the latest information on Hurricane Gonzalo and my latest thoughts this morning. After getting a look at a heck of a lot of data over the past couple of hours, uh, this is by no means an, an easy forecast. Uh, we'll start by getting a look at the latest statistics from the 6.30, or excuse me, 8.30 a.m. Newfoundland Time Advisory from the National Hurricane Center on Hurricane Gonzalo, still Category 4, just barely. Wind speeds 215 kilometers per hour, winds gusting to 269 kilometers per hour. Accelerating now, moving north-northeast at 24 kilometers per hour, and the barometric pressure up a few millibars from last night, 946 millibars, which still makes it a very, very strong storm. And it looks like Bermuda is right in the path of the storm. The eye may actually pass over the island later today or this afternoon. So folks there, uh, thoughts and prayers with you as you ride out this one because it looks like uh, threats to life and property from wind, rain, and big waves uh, are very likely as we go into the afternoon. Uh, so stay safe uh, as much as you can on the island of Bermuda this afternoon. Getting a look at the latest National Hurricane Center forecast on Gonzalo. Uh, again, we'll take it near Bermuda uh, this afternoon. It's a Category 3 storm right now, right in the threshold of a Category 3 to Category 4 storm. Uh, category 4, according to the National Hurricane Center, is 130 to 156 miles per hour, uh, or 209 to 251 kilometers per hour. will weaken to a Category 3 as uh, it moves out of really nice tropi tropical uh, conditions and into sort of more of a mid-latitude environment, which is higher wind speeds that will cause the uh, higher wind speeds actually in, in cooler waters that will cause the storm to begin to weaken pretty quickly. Uh, notice by Saturday afternoon, it's down to a Category 2 with wind speeds in the 154 to 177 kilometer an hour range. And then it looks like it's going to pass uh, very close to Newfoundland uh, Sunday night. And that's when we're, or excuse me, Saturday night. And that's when we are going to see the brunt of the storm. And as of now, with a track that appears like it's going to be either on the east side of the Avalon Peninsula or just offshore, that would mean... Uh, we get more in the way of heavy rain and some gusty winds rather than heavy rain and damaging winds. So wind speeds Saturday night may be in the 100 kilometer an hour range at the most, maybe on coastal areas 110, but the 130, 150 kilometer an hour winds look like they should remain offshore. Getting a closer look at that track now from the National Hurricane Center, and in my opinion, these guys are experts, so I typically don't f uh, stray too far away from their forecast unless... I see something that I don't think they do, but they are very, very smart down there in Miami, Florida, uh, forecasting these hurricanes. And you can see the southeast Avalon is still in the cone of uncertainty, but that track is looking like it will be southeast of the Avalon Peninsula or maybe just east of the Avalon Peninsula. I, I think a track on the left side of that cone or between the center line and the left edge of it is more likely than the right edge. but. All tracks are certainly possible. And why have they shifted the track south and east even going back to yesterday? Well, you can look at the spaghetti plots, and this pretty much tells the story. Keep in mind, each one of those lines is a computer model's forecast of Hurricane Gonzalez track. And you have some that take it over the eastern side of the Avalon, and you have a whole group that keep it offshore. And you even have some that take it well offshore. I, I don't think it's going to be that far east. Now, that being said, you can't throw out every possibility just because you don't like it. But just by the atmospheric setup, I think we have uh, the two tracks to pick from, which are going to be offshore or east coast or just off the eastern side of the Avalon Peninsula. So, again, that keeps the damaging winds offshore. Uh, a few more spaghetti plots to look at. These are much closer. These lines are clustered much closer to the eastern side of the Avalon Peninsula and this model too had a track yesterday that was farther west and this morning it's farther south and east so there definitely has been a trend to shift this storm a little bit more south and east over time and also slow it down a bit as well so again I'm leaning more towards a track that would be offshore or on the east side of the Avalon Peninsula which keeps the strongest and most damaging winds offshore but does bring the heavy rain and gusty winds onshore so that's something we're going to want to 
really pay attention to because some computer models are painting a fair bit of rain and and I'm looking at some things this morning that make me think that they could be under forecasting rainfall amounts a bit so guidance is forecasting 40 to 60 millimeters of rain in some cases but there are there is a chance that some some localized areas could see significantly more rain than that just based on a couple of, of, of technical meteorological things I've been taking a few looks at this morning. So that's something I am a little bit concerned with at the moment. Uh, and again, with this track remaining what looks to be just offshore or offshore, that keeps the strongest winds offshore. This computer model showing wind speeds offshore uh, well above 75 or 80 knots, which is... 130 150 kilometers per hour but notice they do remain offshore now onshore we do see winds well within tropical storm force we're looking at you know on the scale here on the right it says 42 knots so that's probably 70 or 80 kilometers per hour so that's why i'm thinking we still get some wind gusts in the 80 to 100 kilometer an hour range but that probably will be about the max we see partly because uh, we have a tropical system going by or a system becoming extra tropical going by and also because the pressure with the storm is going to be so low uh, this model has it as 953 millibars I believe uh, passing east of the Avalon Peninsula and if that's the case that alone will generate quite a bit of wind uh, going in towards the center of the low National Hurricane Center also showing that uh, eastern Newfoundland does see a greater than 30 percent chance of seeing, I should say, the Avalon Peninsula has roughly a 30% chance of seeing tropical storm force winds are higher. Notice the core, the best chance of seeing those tropical storm force winds is offshore out towards some of the oil operations. And the farther west you go, the less of a chance you see of seeing those gusty winds. And as far as 50 knot winds go, or 100 kilometers per hour or close to it, it looks like only a 5 to 10% chance of seeing those. Uh, across the eastern side of the Avalon. I think our chances are a little higher than that, again, just because the storm is going to be, the pressure is going to be so low that that in general will generate high winds because Newfoundland's a windy place in general. You put a strong low near us and, well, you know, we all know what happens. And then I guess the other aspect is going to be uh, rain and how much rain we see with this. Uh, so now, this is, this image here is showing us six hour rainfall totals and surface pressure so again this is very similar to the last image i showed you with the wind so at this point the wind is still offshore but as you can see that dark red color there is over the eastern side of the avalon peninsula and across central newfoundland that is showing roughly 25 to probably almost 35 or 40 millimeters of rain in a six hour period uh, between 2.30 Sunday morning and 9.30 Sunday morning, so it is going to rain very heavily. It looks like Saturday night with gusty winds. Overall, it's going to be a pretty nasty Saturday night. And as we go into the afternoon Sunday, the storm quickly passes, and weather will be improving, it looks like, after lunchtime, but we still may see uh, rain into the afternoon across the eastern Avalon Peninsula and northeastern Newfoundland. And this model is showing again in that six-hour period between 2.30 p.m. and 9.30 a.m. Sunday, an additional 25 millimeters or so. So how much rainfall are we talking about? Well, this model, and I think this has a similar track to what I actually think may transpire, is showing almost 2 to 3 inches of rain, which is 50 to 75 millimeters of rain across the Avalon Peninsula. And again, it looks like another bullseye there west of the Conagra Peninsula out toward Burgio. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not. Certainly is a possibility. Um, but I do think that uh, that amount of rain on the Avalon Peninsula is a very good possibility. It looks like a little bit less on the Buren Peninsula, uh, potentially in the 25 to 50 millimeter range. Now, there is a chance that some of the computer guidance is actually uh, under forecasting rainfall a bit. Um, and we won't know that until tomorrow afternoon, because if they are under forecasting it, we will see heavy rain tomorrow afternoon. And then we'll see the heaviest rain tomorrow night and into Sunday morning. Um, and so with the computer models not forecasting that, I can't say it's a definite possibility, but it is a possibility. And if we do see that, then I wouldn't be surprised if we see amounts over 70 millimeters in some locations. So something to keep a very close eye on as we do go into the afternoon. Because if you notice it is raining very hard tomorrow afternoon, uh, f potentially heavy rain and flooding may be a likely possibility Saturday night and Sunday morning. So again, with the track remaining offshore, 
more eastern side of the Avalon Peninsula, the impacts look like they are going to be heavy rain and some wind with the damaging wind remaining out over the ocean. Uh, some high wave action as well, certainly a good possibility. But again, the highest waves will remain offshore. And storm surge damage at this point looks like it may not be uh, that big of a deal, but something to keep a very close eye on. And as far as the timing goes, again, this, this looks like it is going to be Saturday night through Sunday morning. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I will uh, continue monitoring Gonzalo's progress throughout the day. And if there's any more updates, you know I'll pass them along to you on Facebook, Meteorologist Eddie Shear, and on Twitter, at Eddie Shear. And I know this was uh, going on about 10 minutes now, but I think it's necessary. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you tonight on NTV starting at 530 on First Edition and on the NTV Evening News Hour between 6 and 7 o'clock.